Please join us on our NHRA race day set along with just crew chief Kevin Pointer. Doug, let's just start by going back to the emotion of Norwalk. This year obviously started very tragically with the loss of John and James and that win. It just seemed like it kept taking so, so long, but it finally came. What did it mean? It meant, uh, it meant a lot to me. My, my daughter Jessie there and, uh, and uh, you know, there's just so many things that, that happened with Scott Coletta and, and uh, you know, we're a tight family out here. And uh, to be able to accomplish something like winning the race, it's, it's hard in these days. And any day it's hard. Uh, Mike and I have been racing for a long, long time. So he's been racing even longer than he. He's old. He doesn't look that much older than me, but he is. But I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. But, uh, you know, I just, Mike always says I deep stage and get that reaction time. You know what? No, it's just a desire to win. I think it's a desire to look inside that light and hit the light and, 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 and drill it. Do I roll in a little bit maybe sometimes? Yeah, but it's just I want to win that bad uh, probably worse than anybody out here. Well, reg I want to prove regardless whether you're deep stage, and I've always said, I mean, you, you've always kind of deep staged a little bit, but your action times have gotten better. So uh, uh, from that standpoint, you've gotten much better this year uh, from the driving. You've been doing an excellent job, and those lights were good. <laughs> you can punch me out later. But, Kevin, I want to ask you one thing here. I think I beat him on a whole shot a long time ago, and he's still pissed maybe or something. <laughs> He actually went deep on me here in 93, and I still drilled him on the light and beat him, but he forgets that one. So let's get the facts straight here, folks. We'll go back and forth on this forever. But Kevin, I want to ask you one thing. I mean, you basically came out here as a journeyman crew chief, and I watched the car. It made good runs, but it didn't have the consistency. What did you have to do to start turning that car around to get that win last week? Well, you know, we have to be smart about our decisions and race the track. That's the most important thing. You know, Mike, we got, we got a great driver in Doug, and he does his job for us on Sunday, and that's really important for the whole program you know we have a, a lot of emotions running this year especially for his family so as far as the car goes you know like I said before we just read the track and try to make our decisions accordingly of course you've had your emotions as well with with Eric Medlin your co-crew chief Keith yeah. Stewart has, has his as well but Doug got to ask you about the thousand foot and racing to a thousand foot your thoughts on that and what it's been like so far this weekend Racing, I think it's a great deal. It slowed the cars down a little bit. We NHRA, everybody's known we have to slow the cars down for years. And uh, I think they've accomplished that. And at the same time, it's probably going to create a little bit less work for the team. Some, it, we're going to blow up some less parts. There's going to be less oil downs. It's going to be better racing for the fans with less oil downs. Better TV for, you know, better li for live TV. Because all the oil downs, not all, but a lot of them happened in that last 300 feet. So I think it's a great deal. I think NHRA did a, made a move. Is it the right move? Like Mike said, it's yet to be seen, but from what I've seen so far, I think they did a, I think they made a good decision. And certainly time will tell. Solidly qualified 402 in the number seven spot with his KP tune-up, but let's go now to our Geico best qualifying run and show you the quickest and fastest a lot of times of this thousand foot era. Friday night under the lights. We always talk about that four second barrier. Well, 392, that's quicker than four seconds. We had it shortened it to 1,000 foot, but that was still a great pass by Corey McClendon and that tire fram team. Mid season report card time. Hand them out. Tony Schumacher, the domination, you've got to give him an A. Plus. Doug Herbert, I'm giving you a B because you've been Ooh, steadily getting better good. and better, and I like what I've seen <laughs> the last few races. Doug Gillette, I'm giving him a D. <laughs> okay, went down to a C for that oh. one. No, I, I still love you. But Doug Coletta, that team is great. The great driver they should be doing better than they are not sure who's sucking up to who here funny <laughs> <laughs> top fuel points tony schumacher no round one losses five wins yep he's a top he's got the a's well Corey mcclenathan into the top five thanks to back-to-back -to -back semis brandon bernstein also moves up hillary will drops down to doug trying to stay into that top 10 and kp tuning the cars to a thousand feet we've asked a lot of crew chiefs is there any changes no, there isn't. We've always raced to the 1,000 foot. Just removed 320 feet, so it's still the same procedure no matter how you look at it. Quickly, Doug, we want to ask about the brakes program. How's it coming along? It's really coming along good. We've got a, uh, my buddy Bob Lutz owns the Mario Andretti and Jeff Gordon driving schools. We've got a, a defensive driving school starting uh, in the fall this year in, in uh, Charlotte, and we're going to move that nationwide next year. It ju you know, there's just such a tragedy with over 6,000 teenagers every year getting killed in car accidents, and that's something that we can actually do something about. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're going to do something about it, save some lives. Be sure to check it out on the web. Doug Herbert, Brandon Bernstein, that's a rematch of the last final. We wish you the best of luck today. Doug Thanks, Herbert, guys. Kevin Pointer.